Hi everybody, Paul Hayward here. Um, this is a quick lesson to just show you the high notes on the saxophone. We're going to be looking at how to, where to put your hands, which fingers to use, which keys to press, but also how to get a good tone on the instrument in the high range, which is something that um, a lot of people sort of struggle with a little bit. So, um, Squiddy, if you're if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe. We've got lots of videos coming up. Um, to my subscribers currently, so I'm a little bit a bit quiet on the channel recently. I've been working on a lot of professional um, projects recently, so I haven't had quite so much time, but I've got lots planned over the next couple of months. Um, so let's start off with talking about your hand position. Now, um, very importantly, you want to keep your hands relaxed. When I'm showing you the the keys to use in a minute, I'm going to use exaggerated hand positions. But what you want to do is we see how my hand is when I'm playing my normal G here. Um, where my hand fits over these keys, I've got it's over this knuckle, then this one's over this finger, this one here is under this finger. So that's that's what I'm going to be using to press the keys. And what that means is as I press these keys, okay, I can keep my hand fairly relaxed, and not be sort of flying out like that. Um, so that's important because if you want to get any kind of speed moving around there, you want to be able to just go from G to playing G to D, like that, G to E flat, G to F, um, without sort of flying your hands out. All right, so remember that. Now let's look at the actual keys you're going to press. So let's start with um, C sharp at the top. So that's going to be just no fingers, remember these exaggerated hand positions, keep your hands nice and relaxed. Octave key on and not pressing down any keys. So, like that. Now we're going to move to D, which is our first side key here. As I said, I'm pressing it with that first knuckle. Um, and for you, it's not necessarily going to be the first knuckle, it's whatever part of your hand is underneath, it, whatever part of the hand is, is over that key when your hand's in its normal position. Okay, so we're going from C sharp, we're going to press D the first one here. We're going to go from D to E flat, which is the next one here. And we're going to go up again, and this time we need to bring our hand from here and pivot it up to press this top key of those three there. So D, we're going to go D, E flat, and then move this hand up to that one. Again, nice relaxed hands. Just pivot, just pivot up and then back down. So D. Okay, now we're gonna add, using this finger here, we're gonna be pressing the third key and that takes us to F. All the time leaving this one in, on now. So. And we're up to high F. Now, not all saxophones have got an F-sharp key, but for those of you who have, we're gonna have three on this hand, this one here, and then behind your F-sharp, normal F-sharp key here, if you pull back, if you've got a, another key here, it's not this one, it's this one here, and it moves this key right at the top. So that one, moving that one. If you've got that, that's your F-sharp key. So D, E-flat, E, F, and then, F sharp. Okay, and we're off to F sharp. So they're the fingers and the keys and where they, um, how you actually play them. But let's talk about the tone because tone on the high notes is a really important aspect. Um, a lot of the time people end up squeezing their embouchure too hard and that's just because the high notes can sometimes be a bit difficult to get out. Um, and they need they need more support. But what we really want to do is give them more air support from our diaphragm. So it means we want to create more pressure from here, breathe into the diaphragm, and push up from there. Um, and what that enables us to do is not squeeze the embouchure so hard, um, which means that the more of the reed can vibrate, giving a louder tone. Now what happens when you do that, though, is that the tone might go flat. It's not an issue. So I'll tell you how to fix that in just a second. So instead of having a, a high note that's thin and weedy, let's go right up to high F here. 
So side key, one, two, three, that's high F. Um, so I'll play it with a squeezed embouchure. Okay, so that's thin and weedy. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but it is. Um, it's also probably a bit sharp because when you squeeze the embouchure that much, it takes it sharp. So now I'm going to relax the embouchure off. So you probably heard that get louder, hopefully on the camera, um, but it got it got louder, but it also came down in tuning. So now it's probably a bit flat. So we've got a big loud high note, but it's out of tune. So next we need to get the tone chamber in the mouth from a relaxed R position up to an E position. Okay, And as you move up the very top part of the register of the instrument, say from A and B with the octave key on up, up to the top, these top high side keys, that's where you transition your tongue position from R into E. And that means that you've got more, um, you don't need to support it and squeeze it so hard and tune it from your embouchure so you can keep that more relaxed and get a bigger tone, uh, bigger tone. Um, so if I play, I'm going to play that top F again with a relaxed embouchure and lots of air, so it's going to be flat, but then I'm going to move my tongue from an R position to an E position and that'll bring the tuning up. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so that's super loud. I didn't do the tongue thing yet, but what I did is I kept my embouchure relaxed and gave it lots of air and it went really, really loud in big tone. So now I'm going to do that same thing, bring the tongue into position. That's not the nicest uh, sound for the neighbours to listen to you practising, but very important. Okay, so that's that's tuning it just with the with the tongue moving from R to E, R E R E R E, and if you can hear that R E R E R E, um, it's moving about a semitone, or possibly more. I don't know, but R E R E R E. The reason that's that's the same tone right there, but the reason that sounds different is because the tone chamber in your mouth, moving from R to E, emphasizes the higher harmonics of the sound we're producing with our vocal cords. So when you use that technique on the saxophone, it helps the saxophone emphasize the higher harmonics within the tone it's producing. Because when we use the octave key, all we're doing is taking this, that's actually the, the sound of the saxophone with playing F, but with it, not do it, we're not up in the octave. Um, yeah, without it sort of jumping up the harmonic it wants to. Basically just like a really horrible C sharp. So we are using the octave key and our tone chamber to say, get up there, up into that high F, which leaves our embouchure free to be a bit more relaxed, to get more air through, and you end up with a nice big sound. Um, just a quick aside, the top F there, there is another way of playing that top F and that's with your C and this key at the top. It's above your B key, so you keep C down and instead of playing the B key, you press the F key. So that's really handy, it's actually a really nice one to play um, and it's actually handy in a lot of situations, especially if you're moving from anywhere to here, jumping up. much easier than going from C to all of your side keys and palm keys and everything. So yes, yeah, so that's a really handy one to have. And you can also play that and add your F sharp key in as well. Okay, so there's a little rundown of how to have your hands nice and relaxed. Play the keys with the parts of your hands that where they fall naturally. Um, remember not to flap your fingers around. D, E flat. E, F, F sharp, alternate F key. Um, and make it sound good by giving it plenty of air. Don't squeeze the embouchure too much. You can add a bit of support, but don't make it feel like you're wearing yourself out. And especially if you're feeling your teeth dig in, you're squeezing too hard with your jaw. Instead, get a big tone and then tune it by using your tone chamber in your mouth, by getting your tongue going from R to E, R, E, R, E.
Okay guys, so hopefully that's given you a good insight into how to play the keys, where to have your hands, how to get a better tone. Um, remember to um, subscribe if you haven't already, um, because that really helps the channel and any likes and comments um, are hugely appreciated and it's really nice to hear from you guys and the uh, the likes do uh, help the video get seen by other people. Also, if you're chatting with anyone else on any any other channels about you know saxophone lessons and um, if you're learning and interacting with other saxophone students on YouTube um, or in, re in real life, any of your friends, make sure you let them know that my channel's here um, and uh, yeah, that'd be fantastic. I really appreciate that. Um, also, I've got my first two uh, patrons on uh, Patreon, which is fantastic. I really appreciate their support. Um, you guys are really, that's really helpful of you. Um, makes this a lot, lot, you know, makes it a bit easier because you don't get much from YouTube for doing these things. Um, so if anyone's interested to come and see me over there, I'll stick a link up here and in the description. Um, come see what we're doing. I'm putting up some extra resources for my lessons up there for you guys to, uh, um, to have and to uh, help you with your saxophone studies. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.